Oh, dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Look at all those hoes. I bet you some are gay. Ho, ho, ho. Anyway, hey, it's Cappy here. <clears throat> and I uh, just got back from my bar in my town. And the bartender asked, he says, What are you doing? I said, Oh, I got to go home and work on the outline for the next uh, book, which it's, it's an essay. I, I, it's, a book is too. Uh, it's too uh, complimentary. It's, it's overstating it. These are essays. I don't like when people come up with a pamphlet. The 23-year-old authors and oh, I got a book. It's like this. Like no, that, that's a that's a pamphlet. So it goes from paper, pamphlet, essay, and then book, and then poem, which is a very nice single syllable word. <clears throat> anyway, so he was asking me, "Oh, what are you going to do?" I said, "I'm going to go outline the book." And he says, um, "Oh, so did you study English when you were in college?" I'm like. No. He's like, well, you did good in English when you were in school. I'm like, no. He's like, really? I'm like, dude, I flunked out of seventh grade English. <laughs> and I said, hey, name me one book written by one of your English teachers. And he said, touche. And so I'm going to explain to all you young kids out there. This is intended for you young kids, but also all you English teachers out there. <laughs> but primarily for the young kids because we can actually save them and help them. Your English teachers don't know jack shit. Let me explain to you why your English teachers taught English. It's because they're lazy. We are already in a country, I don't know if you knew this, unless you're in California, where we speak English. You've learned it naturally. You don't need to break it apart into the dangling participles or the conjunctive and the verbative and all that. These are things I just made up because I'm that much better of, a, of an English person. Uh, you've learned it intuitively in talking with other people. And it wasn't until I was much older, actually, did I realize that people who can't do math or things that are difficult go and get caught up in minutia. The minutia of what? Well, interpreting dance, interpreting art. Where there's subjective thing, there is no absolutes, there is no objectivity, it's just whatever you barf out of your mouth is like, oh, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what people major in English for, because they don't have any skills. They, well, they might have skills, you never know, or they have the capacity to have skills, but they certainly lack the work ethic and the temerity uh, to actually develop those skills. And so they go and major in a subject that is already universal and that they've been doing since the age of three. And the minutia comes in where they say, well, this is a ding, and here's the subject, and here's the action, active verb, and these are professional pronouns, and these are just pronouns, and these are semi-pro pronouns, and these are just amateur nouns. And that's what they do. And they get caught up in this. These people then become your English teachers. <clears throat> and the key thing, though, and this is what's very important about learning about English teachers, is why they got there, why they chose English. It's because they're lazy. And this is why you never find English teachers becoming authors. Because to be an author takes effort and hard work. To be an English teacher takes jack fucking shit. And I guarantee you, and, and, and the, it's a mutually exclusive trait. If you're lazy, you won't write the book. You'll be like Brian the dog on a Family Guy. You'll never get around to it. You'll never get around to writing faster than the speed of love. And so don't be... And I know as, when I'm older, when you are older, you will look back and realize, hey, you know, it's because they were lazy. But when you're a kid, you don't know this. But your bullshit detector goes off because here you are, these these predominantly women are like, well, you see, this really... And your bullshit detector is going off because you're like, this is bullshit. I already speak English. I can write it. What the fuck do I need you for, lady? Get your fucking... 53-year-old overweight ass out of here. Just give me a dictionary at the source. Better yet, just give me the internet. I don't need you anymore. <clears throat> but you see, the real reason that English teachers exist is so that it's primarily an affirmative action employment vehicle for talentless women. And that's truthfully what it is. So millions of young kids get to suffer relearning something that they already know intuitively and by growing up and getting C's and D's and F's in my case because you just didn't understand. It's like, I already know this. Why do I have to know that? And this dangling participle and you outline and you break a part of sentence, that will never help you. Never help you in a million years. So, <clears throat> take it from me, an actual successful author, there, there is no value in English teachers. If anything, there is a 
drawback or harm to them because they make you young kids think there's more to it than there really is. Do you speak English? Good. Can you read it? All right. Can you look up shit in the thesaurus or the dictionary? You can't? Good. You don't need English teachers anymore. And don't worry about your fucking English grades unless you wanted to get like into Harvard. But if you're looking to become a writer, an author, or a real journalist, dude, don't fucking take literature classes. Don't take writing classes. Don't take journalism classes. Just go and fucking write. That's it. And, and seriously, that's it. It's, it's a sad tragedy. And, and unfortunately, we, we force all, you know, millions upon millions every year, millions, tens of millions of kids to suffer and endure at the whims of intellectually inferior, predominantly women who teach English classes, who think they got some kind of fucking study or science. or so like they're actually passing on knowledge or teaching these kids, kids some kind of valuable skills when all they're doing is holding these poor kids hostage so that they can have some kind of cathartic release or give themselves kind of a some kind of agency or value. When in real reality, ladies, you're worthless. You offer nothing to society. And at any point in time, you predominantly ladies could write great literary works. You could actually be authors, you could be literaturists, you could be composers of some kind, but you won't because, well, the number one driving force and determining factor in your life and variable in your life is that you're lazy. That's why you're English teachers. And since you're lazy, you'll never be known, you'll never accomplish anything noteworthy, and you certainly won't ever become an author. So, anyway, just want to say to all my teacher, uh, English teachers, fuck you. Uh, thank you for wasting my time and making me drive me crazy, thinking there was something wrong with me and I was an idiot or a moron. And uh, seriously, any one of you who remember me, Aaron Clary, look me up, see if I was in your class. I would love to see, out of the scores of English teachers that I had, a score of English teachers that, seriously, let me know if you wrote something. I, I love, because I've, I've looked a couple of them up, especially the mean, vindictive ones. They're fucking dead. <laughs> Truthfully, they're all dead. They died angry, old, bitter, like the classical textbook feminist with her cats. That was these women, and they're dead. Their lives are fucking wasted. All they did was taught English, and they never fucking contributed anything to the literary compilation of American works. Nothing. There's nothing. They, they, they are dust in the wind. They're gone. You won't even, you could look them up on Google. You're not going to find them. You want to why? Because they never achieved anything. So I want to tell all you fucking worthless bitches and whores out there, not whores, bitches and cunts, better word. Fuck you. All right, right there, right there. All right, you made us sit there listening to you blather on about the subjective adverb, and this is an adjective, and I'm going to give you an F because you don't know the difference. Still don't know the difference, but I'm actually memorable. I actually have a track record. And when I die, people will actually remember my works. I know, it's good. And you're just like, uh, you're just another fucking school marm. So anyway, uh, so fuck you to the school teachers. But for all you kids out there, yeah, your English teacher doesn't know jack fucking shit. Don't worry. If you're, if you're like, why? Well, I thought I worked really hard. Why'd she give me a C minus? Probably because you're a guy. Probably because you didn't like, I don't know. She just, I don't know. She was on her period. I'm not joking. You think that sounds crass? Actually, some of you are too young to even know what that means. Uh, but seriously, don't worry about English. Don't worry about English teachers. These are the bottom of the barrel. These are these are the most affirmative action -y hires you'll ever have in your life, and you can largely ignore them. If you speak English, you read it, you write it, you can look up words in the dictionary, you can compose like, yeah, yeah you write emails, right? Don't worry about it, you're fine. Become an author, Amazon affiliate, oh, Amazon, Create Space, Kindle, you don't need English teachers anymore. Just go and write. Just go and write. That's all you have to do. Seriously, fuck the entire English industry. Just go and write. They're wannabes. Don't be a wannabe. Be a bee. Be a producer. Be, uh, be an author. Best of luck. Tools.